Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Kwam Yosha Allah, Koholoimla, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Kaha Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth and just want to say the water to all the Akiyam and Akwap that's all here sincerely, keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai to the best of their ability. This is Yahanan Nawah, just coming at you with another quick lesson, praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And um, wanted to touch on pretty much something that kind of happened earlier. Well, as I was coming from the plantation, I seen this guy at the bus stop, but he was sprawled out, you know, on the ground. You know, I seen his bike, you know what I'm saying? But he was literally laid out like almost looked like how, you know, you see the chalk when, when someone is, you know, deleted. You know what I'm saying? In a movie, like how they chalk the line, the line of chalk. He was he was kind of had that position. <laughs> And I'm like, damn, I hope is this guy, is he all right? You know, so I'm, you know, I'm doing the speed limit. So I'm doing about 40. I see him, I'm passing him. Everybody else is passing him. So, you know, first block I hit, you know, spirit just like, you know what I'm saying? You know, go back, check the guy out, see, you know, see if he all right. So, you know, I, I bend the, you know, bend the first block, turn around real quick, pull up on him. And, you know, I'm just yelling at him like, yo, yo, bro, you all right? And, you know, he, 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 he looked up. I'm like, okay, well, shit, at least he's alive. Because the way he was looking, he just looked like he was out of there, man. And, you know, I ended up kicking it with him for a hot sec. I said, you all right? He's like, yeah, man, I just worked. I just, I worked a late night and I just got off. And he was that tired. You know, he, he didn't appear to be high. He didn't appear to be drunk. It wasn't no drinks or nothing around him. Matter of fact, his sandwich, he had he had some food. He, he actually, he, 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 he shit, his damn face was on his sandwich on the ground. That's how tired the older guy. He was an older gentleman. That's how tired he was. You know, he was, you know, because, you know, hey, when you when you catch the bus, so you, you catching the bus, man, back and forth to work. That shit is a part time job in itself. I always said that because I used to catch the bus. You're going to put at least where I live. You're going to most definitely put in at like two. You got look, if you got to say you got to be to work at nine o'clock in the morning, you got to be up and out and about by six. Literally to be there on time. That shit is like two and a half hours, man. Just it, especially if you gotta connect two, three buses. Some, you know, you know, you, you good. If you know, kind of, you better off if you only gotta just get on one bus. But if you gotta connect and you miss one of those connections, man, that shit used to be crucial, man. I pray that I never <laughs> had to ride another bus again. But you know, I can tell you know just that him riding the bus. He had his bike though, cause you know with the buses here, I'm not sure how it is maybe in other cities. But, you know, the buses here, they have, like, a bike rack. Where I think now, they used to be you could get, like, two bikes on there. So, if you was a person with a bike and there was already two bikes on there, hell, you was hit. You had to just wait on the next bus, so to speak. And hopefully, that one went full, too. But I think there are, like, three three sections where you can put the bikes on now. And, you know, that, that helps some. You see what I'm saying? Because, you know, a, a, a bike goes a long ways, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, shit. Especially if, you, if you're on a bus and you got to connect like that. But, man, that, that, that gentleman was so, so tired. Now, mind you, he's literally, like, in front of a, um, I think it was a, it wasn't a doctor's office, which was ironic. But it was, like, a, I think somewhere that you maybe pick up your pres um, prescriptions from. But nobody would stop him. Everybody was passing this guy up like it was just whatever. I found this shit to be weird. Like, damn, you know, I'm looking at him like he was just laid out like, damn, is this dude all right? Did somebody rob him? Did somebody do something to him? You know, and and, and, and right, you know, the block that I kind of bent to turn around, there's a, you know, like a, a ice cream shop, you know, where it's kind of like Dairy Queens, but it's like some family owned hookup. But that shit packed with fat women standing around it getting soft serve, you know. <laughs> and nobody was asking this man, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about literally just passing this man up like he was a piece of trash, bro. And and it's the scripture that hit me right here. Well, I'm going to start from verse 1, 2 Timothy 3 and verse 1. Let me start there with the point I want to get is in verse 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Matter of fact, let me read it in the New Living Translation. Because it just gives it to you just straight flat plain. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times for people will love only themselves and their money. See? They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. 
they will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving. That's the point that I wanted to get. And in, in the KJV it says without natural affection. That's what. That's the first thing that came to mind. Like now, man, the, the natural affection is gone. Shit can happen to you out here, man. And motherfuckers gonna pull their phone out. They gonna Facetime you. They gonna, you know, they gonna lie. They gonna, they, they gonna lie. Be snickering, laughing. They're not gonna want to get you no care or no help. Nobody even want to be bothered these days. You know, this is how. This, this is how you know we're in the last days. This is one of the perfect indicators of us being there, man. This shit is a wrap. That unnatural affection, man. It says they will be. For people will love themselves only. Salakia. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to parents, unthankful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. They Stay away from people like that. That's what the scriptures clearly say. Stay away from them. And I'm willing to bet you every single one of those women that pass, every single one of those men that pass, these people passing, you know, walking by like, God damn, you can't ask the men, you know. I'm willing to bet you they'll tell you they're Christians. Yeah, I believe in the Lord. Jesus Because you know you can't assume that everybody is drunk Or everyone is high you know what I'm saying Which I just found that shit to just be foul But you know I spent around man I, I turned around but you know hey, yeah that brother man I, I told him too I said well man Hey I said yeah we tired man You know what I'm saying I said one day we gonna get To a point of we not gonna have to get up and work Like how we working and I think he actually Said assalamu alaikum or some crazy shit Which is I uh, you know Jake just threw Like that but you know I just wanted to check on the guy, man. You know what I'm saying? But that scripture definitely came to mind as soon as I seen how people was passing him up. And, you know, I was just um, coming from the plantation. I stopped at the Walmart, which was right around a couple of blocks up from where I seen him at. You know, I'm just trying to rush to the crib, trying to get some popping for, um, you know, the Shabbat, you know, to make some food or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to cut the grass because the grass just been out of hand, you know, because it just keep raining. And the day was a day that I was able to get out here and get it. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, man, I, I just seen that to be so foul, man. The people were just passing that, that, that gentleman up like that. But, hey, see, Esau, we're going to work the shit out of y'all asses in our kingdom, too. Because Jake just got it, man. That, that man, and that gentleman, was, he was an older guy. You know, I can't even, you know, he might not have too much more in him. If he lay it, if he can't handle sitting up and waiting on the bus i told him i said he had his boots off and everything his shoes is off i said well man get on up you know what i'm saying shit put your boots on he was just sitting there trying to you know get his mindset right you know what i'm saying and shit I, I told him you know the bus gonna be coming you know what i'm saying have your boots on at least and be ready you know what i'm saying when it do come you know what i'm saying but shit i pulled off he was he he, he must have had some more food because he was eating on some chicken wings or whatever but i was like you know i just kind of gave him the thumbs you know thumbs up and i Peeled on off, man, and went on about my way, you know. But I just seen that to just be very, you know, um, disheartening, so to speak. But hey, it's you know, we understand, we understand what's going on, we understand that things are gonna get really, really rough. And, and trust me, family members do family members like this, man. You're living in days where family don't give a shit about family like that no more, they know you got something. That's why I say, too, you know, you being into this truth, and you know. The people, your family, your friends, your cousins, aunties, everybody that you've been telling this truth to, they're going to pretty much be coming your way at a certain point. But, you know, it's going to be a cutoff point where you're going to just be like, hey, look, man, just like uh, um, pretty much like um, um, Noah. The boat, you know what I'm saying? When the door closed on that boat, like, hey, look, it's a wrap. I can't talk. You know, ain't nothing happening. You're not coming in here. <laughs> you know, matter of fact, the Lord not going to even allow them to really. Because they weren't allowed to get on that boat with Noah. I'm sure someone was crying, screaming out. You know how many people was around, man? Babies and shit screaming and crying. Women got babies on their tit. You know what I'm saying? Sucklings and things of that nature, man. They, they, there was a lot of people on the earth when that flood went down. And you know they were screaming, hollering, scared. Because the boat was still there. You have to realize that that boat was still sitting there for quite some time. It wasn't like the boat just floated up because the rain it took a, 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 a days and i think it was 40 days or so 
but it took a while for the boat to actually enough water to be there with a boat would just actually float and take off so that boat was sitting there the people started to feel that water so just think when the water got like ankle high then the water started to get like knee high then the water started to get like thigh high at their waist then it started to get to a point where now the shit is at their chest and they got their babies on their shoulders then it gets to their shoulders then because you know it was you know mountains and hills they was climbing all that shit trying to you know um, um um get away from it but that water kept rising but like i said you know the point that i wanted to make is it's going to come a point where you're going to shut your family out just like how the lord shut um the people of the earth out man from noah the lord had already like up oh, yep that's it that amos 8 and 11 is coming the famine of the word you've been telling them you've been teaching them you've been trying to um preach to them they don't want to hear they reject it they're not rejecting you they're rejecting the words of yahweh about shimei Messiah. That's who they're rejecting. They're not re rejecting you. That's why you shouldn't feel bad about it. And once you tell them, you know what I'm saying, two or three times, man, leave it alone. They're not going to get it. You know, who knows what the Lord may do in the, in the end of it. You know what I'm saying? Well, they, they might be like, all right, well, you know, we don't know the, the, the full, full will of the Lord. The Lord might wake them on up. You know what I'm saying? They might get scared to the point where like, all right, I'm, but hey, it's going to come a point where some of them just going to be screaming, hollering, kicking, and they're going to remember you. And they're going to be at your door because they're going to figure like, oh, well, shit, hey, they was into that truth, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm certain they got some food. They had to have been preparing. They surely have some water. They surely have, you know what I'm saying? Some damn aspirin, <laughs> some alcohol for somebody whooping their asses or some, some band-aids, some gauze to patch their asses up. I'm sure they got something because the way that they was talking, I know that they was prepared, you know, so to speak, you know, but hey, man, people... Are about to get full fledged fucking crazy out here. Ephesians 5 and 15 it says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So you're supposed to be walking wisely, circumspectly, which is mean to watch. That's why the Lord said to watch and pray. You know, when you go off into that Luke, I brought this out earlier, because I pray this every day. This Luke um, 21 and 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So you want to be, uh, uh, you know, in that, in, in that light, man. You want to be ready and praying to Yahweh that you are able to, you know, because the average person that don't know this truth, hey, they, they, these people, man, they're going to be bugging the fuck out. They're going to be in full-fledged bug-out mode, trust me. And they're going to be coming to you. That's just like when the, um, the earthquake was out there in New York the other um, last week or two weeks or so ago. Everybody calling. I had people actually calling me from New York here in Detroit. That You know, friends that I, I know out there. Oh, man, I know you know what's going on. You know, I, I, all right, well, all right, all right, why aren't you repenting? And then, you know, shit calm down. Jake, go back into party mode and, and don't give a shit. But it's going to come a point, man, where it's going to, you know, the Lord going to make that last official warning. And that's going to be it, man. Right? But let me get this in the Apocrypha real quick. Yeah, man, I seen that. I was like, damn, man. Nobody going to stop for that, man. I'm like, God damn, bro. And I mean, it's going to come a point where, hey, even, even us, you know, are not going to stop for people like that. We just going to be like, hey, because the Lord going to cut it off. The Lord going to cut it off, man. He going to be like, hey, stand back, get back, move. <laughs> get out of the way because i'm about to do you don't want to be around these people man when the lord get the judging them man because they got their opportunity to do what he want them to do you know the gospel is going out to them but let's get this real quick um i wanted to get second address chapter 15 let me start at verse 14 it says woe to the world and them that dwell therein for the sword and their destruction draw of nigh and one people shall stand up to fight against and one people shall stand up to fight against another and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men invading one another. Shalakia. Invading. Why did he do that? For there shall be sedition among men invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. See, they're not going to be regarding no kings, no prince. Hey, you know, you, you're going to have to be careful of even 
if a police officer roll up on you because they, they could be somebody may not even be the damn police no more. Just somebody that's, uh, that's that stole a damn cruiser. Then stole the police cruiser and took this nigga's uniform. He rolling up and just snatching people. You thinking that he's about to help you, especially you women. You thinking he's coming to your rescue and he's rolling you up to somewhere and chaining your ass up. It's going to be all out chaos. Man, look, all scenarios are on the table, man, when it comes to this, what, what's about to come, man. 911 is not going to be a thing, man. And I was thinking earlier, too, with 911. See, the only reason why the so called white man is not lumping you niggas up on a day to day basis is because of the law, so to speak. But when that law is get gotten rid of, which the Lord is going to get rid of it, that 911 you be, you're able to call, you're going to see the real hatred that these so-called white people have for you too. That's another thing. Right? But it goes on to say, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Ain't no telling how that's going to play out. You might be out here, got family somewhere, and, and, and your family could just be fucking three or four miles away in another city. And you might not even be able to get to them. Whether you're on, on feet, walking, bike, I don't give a shit, truck, car. Because, you know, a lot of things is going to be done with, with you know, um, feet motion. Unless you got a small motorbike or some shit. Because it's going to be too much shit backed up, traffic backed up, cars everywhere. People fucking going crazy, honking on horns. You know, just never know, man. You know, just that's just me speaking as a man, you know. Okay, but it goes on to say, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall, shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. That's the point that I really wanted to get to. But shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of lack of bread and for great tribulation. See? So when things really hit the fan, it's going to be your, it's gonna be people that you know. You have known for, for decades in a lot of cases. They're going to come up against you. I just seen a lady. She was walking her dog. And I don't know why I was... Uh, I was on my scooter. I was just, just went to the store, you know, because I a lot of the times I'll jump on. I got a nice little scooter. I'll jump on that scooter, throw my backpack on, you know what I'm saying, and put what I'm going to get in my backpack from not getting too much stuff, you know, um, from the store or whatever. And, you know, and, you know, and just to get out, too, it's just, you know, relaxing to get on it and just ride. But um, so I seen this lady, and she was out there, you know, with her dog, walking her dog. And I was just thinking, like, you know, that's a nice dog, but there's going to come a point where people are going to have pets like that. And they're not going to be able to feed those pets. And there's going to come a point where famine is going to set in. Where she might want to fucking cook that dog. But I was also thinking, if she don't cook the dog before that dog get hungry enough to turn on her, she might become his meal. <laughs> you see? So, you know, it's just all different scenarios, man. Be be, be going through your, your, you know, your mind and stuff, man, when you come into this truth. Because cause the Lord, man, hey, it's cold, bro. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, man. We don't know the full extent until we start to get to seeing it. But to, to, to read it scripturally, it, that's some scary shit, man, that's about to come to this place, man. So, and seeing that man sprawled out on the ground like how he was, broad daylight. Broad daylight. This is like about 1.30. Broad daylight, not one person stopped to see was that man all right, man. Car after car after car after car after car passing this man because it was a busy intersection. So I know people seeing him, but not one person stopped, man, to check to see was that man all right. And I'm thinking like, wow, that's where we know. God damn. It's a lucky <laughs> damn. Anyway, but yeah, man, that's how we, hey, that scripture came straight to mind. That that um that that no affection, man. People are not gonna care about you, man. It's crazy that you can you can you can be with your spouse and they really just don't care about you. They just there because it's convenient. You know? A lot of people laying up with each other, you know what I'm saying, just because the bills are being paid on the other end, you know. This is the place that I got to stay and you know, until I find something else. I'm just going to, you know, I, I'll act as if I like this person or love this person, you know. But, man, it's about to be all out chaos right from the home front all the way to your neighbor across the street, your neighbor next door to you. And, 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 and oh, my, getting out in public, trying to go somewhere and trying to really get something. 
Man, it's about to be all out chaos off this place, man. It says, they. Uh, it says, let me get to verse 19 again. It says, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. That lack of bread going to be cold, but that great tribulation, that's, a, that's an extra add-on. That great tribulation, because it's going to be so fucking crazy out here. That great tribulation is going to really hit people over the head, man. You're going to have some really, the Lord is about to really show, about to, about to get down, man, on some real terror. Like no other time before on the planet, man, according to the scriptures, man. People have no idea what the Lord is about to do. That's why we do these lessons. We tell you to repent, you know, to the Father, Yahweh, in the name of his son, Yahweh, Shai. Those are the true names of the Father and Son. Because there's going to come a point where you're going to have to call on those names, man, and really be trusting on him. That scripture that um goes off into, um, let me get this real quick, Isaiah. Chapter 33 and verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Hey, you're going to want to know the, the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh by Shimei Shai. You're going to want to know what he said to do. You're going to you're gonna want to know his name. Because our people out here calling on damn white Jesus, which is a fucking idol. They calling on different gods. They just, you know, and a lot of people, they just, they just, they, they just going to believe in that, that spouse that they got. That woman or that man or their children. It's going to be that point. You see these movies where, you know, they're going to be, you know, the phone is on and they're talking to FaceTime and all of a sudden shit click or, you know, you know somebody's behind them or, or they're hearing a noise. What's that? Baby, somebody's trying to break into the house, you know, some shit like that. And then all of a sudden the line goes click. Now, this motherfucker trying to get from somewhere to get to you and may not be able. That's why the scripture says that um, a man shall be, you know, shall want to go to a city and, and, and um, will not be able to roughly paraphrasing. You might be trying to just get your your peoples might be just ten blocks away. That shit can seem like a whole world away if it comes down to um people being out on the streets, total chaos is going down, and you know people you, Jake already crazy as hell, and we ain't gonna even talk about Esau. Y'all so called black people, Hispanics, Native American people that live in these so called white people neighborhoods, they gonna run y'all asses back to the hood, and guess what? You're going to be even, in a, in, in, it's going to be too, you need to be getting away from those people now. At least situating. At least you have a better chance because they're going to they gonna get down on you. Esau going to get down on you Negroes that's done moved to the burbs. Them gated communities that you tried to get away to. Them crackers going to be on your ass. <laughs> you straight up. And, 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 and hey, it, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. So, you know, I'm going to end out there, man. I just see, I just wanted to touch on the fact that I seen that guy laid out on the ground like that. I'm talking about really laid out. Couldn't believe it. I'm like, damn, it's a busy intersection. You know, the street, people blowing by. Like I said, you know, the speed limit is like 40 miles an hour, but, you know, very bu busy intersection. And, you know, people doing, you know, they nobody doing the speed limit these days. Hell, everybody's speeding. They blowing all by them. All they got to do is jump the curb. Real quick, you know, a little slight jump, curb jump, and they all on his ass. That's how he was laid out. He was damn near on the curb. Nobody stopping. Nobody asking to see was he okay. So, you know, hey, man, all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh man, for his protection and safety, man. And pray, just keep, you got to pray. Continue praying. That's one of our main, main um weapons, man. That's why the scripture says pray without ceasing. That's why um, Yahweh Shai, he said to watch and pray. What are you watching for? The, the, the end times, the shit like that. See, when you come into this truth, man, you, 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 you pretty much you got like spidey senses. You know, you, you become alert, man, to a lot of shit that you never used to see before because you're open in the spirit. I never used to pay attention to a lot of this. You know, the, the stuff that I look at and see now is just like a, it's just through a spiritual lens now. Everything used to just be carnal. So, you know, we're, we're thankful to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man, for this truth, man. I'm praying that he would not take away his Holy Spirit from us. So, hey, with that, I'm going to end out. I pray that the lesson was edifying. Kwam Yashallah.